I am just going to finish this thing off. Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to the end of this build. Okay, so I started this guitar at uh, in a field at Glastonbury Festival. I used uh, hand tools only to build the thing. If you haven't yet gone back and watched the, the time lapse of uh, making the instrument, uh, then please go and check that out. I thought when I was uh, starting this process of completing it, i.e. applying a, a finish and a stain, etc., that it would be a, a single video, a single day's work, and we'd be sorted because, you know, I got it to the point where it had strings on and was playing. I tend to go, I tend to follow the idea, and this channel has evolved and changed and, and stuff has happened over the years, but it has always been to me about pushing my boundaries, pushing the boundaries of what can and should be done, and just experimenting and having fun with guitar building. I had an idea, and then another idea, and another idea, and suddenly we're three or four videos in, and uh, I went off piste with Gold Leaf, and had a blast. I'm very happy with the result, except for the fact that there's a few spots that uh, uh, that came about due to uh, the the original circle mold that I made being too flexible so that the center as I was pushing down the center here uh, made some marks on the guitar and I need to get rid of those before I apply the finish. Burn it. <laughs> and it's a it's a case of going in with a sharp chisel and just gently scraping away the surface layer of the bits that I don't like. I'm not after perfection here. That's going to come in another build with a, a different technique to get the same sort of effect. But I don't want a glaring mistake. Actually, one of those tiny little curved luthier scrapers does the job even better. It never ceases to amaze me how delicate and gentle you can be with, with a sharp steel tool. I don't want to get all of the little uh, random specks that there are. Just want to tidy up a little bit. There we go. Much tidier. On with the finish. Now, my plan was to apply blonde shellac 
directly over the top and then guitar finishing all etc completely forgetting that these things uh, do not react well with gold leaf i'm going to i'm going to use some hairspray yes it's mine <laughs> Yeah? Yeah? Well, the sun came out. Could be raining in 14 seconds. So the trick when applying a uh, finish of any sort is to uh, start off the edge of the instrument and uh, go to the other edge you don't want to change direction midstream this is incredible i have never ever considered using hairspray as a finish so this uh, this needs to just dry for a minute or two i'm going to probably apply another coat over the top and see where we go but uh, I'm happy what do you think judge me in the comments ha I dare ya Here we go. Boots, everyday firm hold. Uh, hairspray, unperfumed. What can you do? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I am. <laughs> I'm really, really happy with how this is turning out. Okay, I am going to. Just apply a thin coat of Renaissance microcrystalline wax polish and leave it at that. Now it's true, I could have taken this guitar to uh, my fully functional professional level spray booth at headquarters. Uh, we could have done a full high gloss, crazy insane finish, uh, flip flops and you know, well, if you can dream it, we can do it. I love doing this, I love going off piste, doing the unexpected, playing fast and loose with my reputation. I don't necessarily mind if uh, the instrument that I make completely, completely fails, doesn't work. 
Uh, well, I do because, you know, that's the point. But the processes that I'm experimenting with are so that I can push, push myself, push the boundaries and potentially make life easier for uh, hobby builders, hobbyist builders or professional builders around the world uh, by showing what is potentially possible or, you know, playing fast and loose with my reputation, showing what should not be done. So if an instrument completely disintegrates and just doesn't doesn't work at least we've learned something and I'm still going to film it I'm still going to show my mistakes and uh, I think that that's potentially a, a healthy way to to look at life I love being shown that I'm wrong uh, because it means that I've learned what is right what is the correct way of doing something anything uh, now in this case in this case it has worked the sealant coat has done what I wanted it to do, and it's yeah. somebody's hairspray. A little bit of uh, museum grade microcrystalline wax, and I have got a guitar that I'm going to enjoy for the rest of my life. And uh, you can come and visit at the uh, Doors of Guitar Museum, actually, so uh, it'll be there uh, as well as, it, uh, as that whole thing builds up and grows and changes and moves uh, so yeah check out dorsalguitarmuseum.com and uh, dailyguitardraw.com which is uh, the platform that we set up to uh, uh, help fund it initially while uh, we wait for government funding I am going to be playing experimenting and giving some serious thought uh, to alternate finishes. We've moved to a point in Luthery where uh, matte finishes have become uh, boutique and uh, single signals of, uh, uh, of quality and expense, which is great. As uh, budget instruments have become better and better and uh, the finishes have uh, become more and more impressive, uh, custom builders and high-end uh, manufacturers have had to come up with something else that they can sell to you as the uh, as the cat's meow and uh, for example we now have these spray matte finishes which are cheap easy and uh, well far easier to apply but uh, I find myself wondering why we can't use uh, a, a brush uh, I love the texture on the front of old oil paintings, for example. Uh, why can't we have a crosshatch texture? So uh, I'll, be, uh, I'll be looking into that and uh, coming up with alternatives. Uh, please give me your ideas for that in the comments below. Yeah, these were the only tuners that, uh, that I had that were gold. I don't like the way they fit up here, so I'm going to swap these out at another, another day. And uh, what you're actually seeing here, people, is uh, somebody who has really struggled with finishing projects, who now just wants to finish it, even though he's going to have to go back and change the tuners. Uh, I told myself I would get this done today, and gosh darn it, I am. So that's the nut we made at Glastonbury, and... Uh, we didn't have time to finish it off properly. Nail file tools are actually a fairly integral part of my workshop. I really, I really like them. Uh, Daria 
I'm going with some 1152s. I'm not sure if this is strong enough for that, but uh, I, I hope it is. I just love the excess strings. And this is where the uh, gold leaf and everything starts to come together. Uh, bronze strings, etc. Okay, so the way I put the strings on is I wrap them around two or three times, uh, more on the thinner strings, push the wind down and then push My hands are slippery and waxy. Wait, come on then. Push that through above the winds. And then you hold the string under tension with your finger and tune up. And basically that's pushing the winds down, giving you a, a break angle, etc. And we're all sorted. Now the one thing that I cannot rush is the, the settling of this instrument. It was made as, a, as an experiment, it does not have a pickup, it is acoustic, it's got a light top and uh, there are a couple of braces internally but they aren't necessarily as strong as I should have made them. Uh, we carved the top out of a solid chunk of mahogany, so uh, with hand tools only, we drilled out the waste and, uh, uh, and then put a radius on it uh, to give it a curve. And I was hoping that that radius would uh, give uh, strength, but it's not as strong as I would like. So these strings, the action is very high right now. Uh, these strings are going to push the top down a certain amount and I'm going to watch that over the next week, see what happens to it. And uh, the nut is currently very high. And what do you think of the, uh, the new crimson neck rest, by the way? Uh, so yeah, I'm going to watch this, set it up, and then we will uh, film, we'll film a demo and sound test, etc. later, uh, which will be, well, it will be on this video after the setup. Look at her. <laughs> I know, I know. Looks, looks are not everything. Look at me. Uh, but, I mean, it counts for a lot as well. So, I'm going to have a fiddle. Hold on. The other thing that I did was this very strange neck joint. I, um, in the field, I said to, to Sean, who was one of the teachers in our um, uh, guitar building school, I said, Sean, I've got an idea. And he said, no, Ben, don't do it. Don't do it, you're in a field. And essentially I was thinking a deconstructed Les Paul type tenon. Uh, the, the, you don't need end grain to end grain. It's a very, very, um, dubious uh, glue joint and it's just not part necessarily part of the equation and I thought I could do away with that and of course I've made a very complex shape here and yeah just having a rectangular tenon going in there is absolutely strong enough or at least should be uh, Thank <laughs> you. 
Need a stretch of strings. And tune it. Gosh darn it. Come on then. Let's tune. Okay, so I'm just gonna file down the saddle a bit, get some action. The the top has not moved anywhere near as much as I thought it would under this gauge strings. As you can tell, I left a lot of room to play. Well, here we go. So finally, this instrument has an action that uh, uh, that I'm happy with. I'm very, very, very happy with uh, with the look. Can't believe this is a hairspray uh, finish. But uh, I'd like to change the nut at some point. That'll probably be another video uh, later on in life. Uh, maybe I'll do that at uh, Glastonbury Festival uh, this year if I <laughs> have a minute. But let's, uh, let's see if we can go and find a guitarist. The beautiful thing, the beautiful thing about having, uh, having the student house next door, uh, this is where uh, students who are uh, learning how to build guitars at the Crimson School of Luthery, some of them live here. Chances are there's a very talented guitarist just outside this door. Yeah. Ha ha ha! Charles, finally, she's built. Absolutely lovely. <laughs> oh man, it's a wonderful guitar. Like, it sounds really cool. It reminds me a lot of parlor guitars. Um, so they got that really sort of metallic, sort of high-end sort of sound because it's got a smaller body. But I absolutely love that, and it reminds me of uh, old violins and stuff, and especially with the obvious design. But the idea of having this really cool aesthetic with the function as well, with the low horn mood for guitarists, <laughs> like myself. I can do that on it, so it should be all right. So, we've Charles is currently here. Uh, you're doing a, a couple of days just as a setup course, refresher, etc. But Charles has actually just come on board as a staff member at Crimson. 
and there's going to be some very, 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 very cool things coming out of it. So you'll see a lot more of him. Um, what's your album? You've got an album that's just come out. Yes, yeah, so I've got an album that's come out recently. If you're interested in the kind of stuff that I do, please check it out. It's on all major streaming platforms, including Spotify and Apple Music, and even on YouTube. It's called Desiderium, and just search Desiderium, spelled D-E-S-I-D-E-R-I-U-M, uh, and then my name, Charles Roper, and check me on Instagram on Charles Roper Guitarist if you want to get a short link for that as well. Play Wonderwall! <laughs> <laughs> <Play Wonderwall. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we're done. It is far too cocky, Frank. It is indeed. <laughs> yeah.